Welcome to Rimworld, where it's currently peace in our time and business as usual, really. Things are going quite nicely in the colony. We've got no, no real pressing issues, no threats, lots of food. Everyone's happy. Now we can focus on the continuation of the upgrade project. So, I was linked to mod on Discord earlier, which I'll have to quickly just grab the name for. Bear with me for a second, because I don't remember off the top of my head. But essentially, it's a mod that allows you to track down what you're missing for for jobs and bills. It's actually called What's Missing? Uh, highlighted Recipe Descriptions. So I've got that enabled, and this, this mod is actually kind of a game changer in some ways. So when you look at um, things now that you're going to craft, it will show what you're actually lacking. Uh, and obviously, it will color code it as well. And same thing for, for skills as well. In fact, that's a bad one to show. Let's show this one instead. So, the colors correlate to various things. So, so yellow, for example, is you have some in your stockpile, but not enough. Crafting level, same thing. So, I mean, 17 out of 18 now. I wouldn't have actually realized that at a glance, I'll be honest with you. Then we've got things like uh, green shows that you've got more than enough. Um, if it's blue, it means you've got more than double the requirements in your stockpiles. That one's very safe to do. And then red is you've got less than a half what's necessary, I believe. So obviously, we've got zero AI persona cores. But this is going to allow us to much more easily track down what we're missing. So we know we've got some plastic, not enough. Same with gold. Um, and same with our crafting skill. It's actually quite, uh, we're limited quite a lot by our crafting skill more than everything else here. Plastic, still an issue, but we can craft more, don't forget, when we get some more steel. Um... Man, that was the same story. That one requires crafting 19. Then we've got this lion heart, which we've had queued up for quite a long time. We're lacking a long sword and the gold for it as well. Um, I thought we had lots of gold. No, we really don't. I guess we've um, guess we spent a lot on advanced components, huh? So we know we've got to make a long sword, so I'll go ahead and craft one of those. Oh man, we're actually going to need to build a whole smithy just for one freaking long sword. Well, never mind. Um, but yeah, that's, that's hopefully going to make things a lot easier. It's actually probably going to be a permanent mod I use for the rest of series for all time. Because it is just so... So useful to have that information at a glance. I know there is anyway, but it means we don't have to wrestle with... means we don't have to wrestle with a load of uh, interfaces and UIs and whatever else. Right, where do we want to put this then? We're going to use it very infrequently. So to be honest, we could put it somewhere where it's not really going to matter too much. God, we do not have enough room still, do we? Could have done with an expansion to this room. Maybe maybe move this one. What would have been better, in hindsight, is have this as the recreation room. Because that's in the center of all of this stuff. Use some of this zone as the research lab. Because only a few people are going to be going over there. So it doesn't matter that it's over the other side of the base. And then have turned all of this into an additional work area. But it's a bit late in the game now to be completely redoing everything. We could remove the mending bench for the time being. Uh, seeing as we don't have... Uh, actually, it's somewhat unnecessary given that we've got the mending armor axe now. I might uninstall that one. Actually, I'm going to go as far to deconstruct it entirely. Do they just instantly tear that apart? Do you see that? What the hell happened there? Um, right, so let's go ahead and get the smithy down. Granted, we're going to use the smithy probably once and also remove it. But I'm sure we can replace it with something else just as useful. Neuro Enhancer. Oh, that's actually pretty significant. Now, the other thing I've done is uh, the two elastic Achilles that we queued up ages ago were finished. So I've gone ahead and installed those or at least queued them up. I don't know if she's actually gotten around to installing them yet into Sharama. So if we go ahead and check him now. Uh, right, so we've got one elastic Achilles. We're missing the other one. Um, what have we got in the stockpile then? But like Neuro Enhancer. What did that one do? 33% learning speed and 10% work speed bonus as well. The whole reason we were making that one is to help increase his melee skill. His melee skill's already gone up quite a lot, but it, it will help not only keep the melee skill, but prevent that skill degrading. Can we even install it? Have we got too much going on here? Um, let's try Bill instead. Neuro Enhancer. There we are, in the brain. Has he got any room in his brain left, the poor boy? He's got so much going on for him right now. I'll have to check his market value after we're done with that operation. And in the background, as you can see, I've started up some other research, which isn't really going to affect the Cyber Orc project or the sort of end game of things, but it's kind of things that we've missed along the way. So I've gone for autopsies uh, just to kind of help out with if any of our people die, we can we can obviously take them apart and then take the components back. I, I don't know why we wouldn't just resurrect them, but it works for enemies as well. So if we end up fighting the Empire, and it turns out they've got some really good combat mods, like the Blue Moon Corporation have some good combat mods. We can remove those and, in, in theory, install them into our own people. I've also started researching Glitter World Medicine as well. No idea what that actually requires to craft it. So that one, again, might be a massive waste of time because we might not have the components to, to even build that up. Um... Oh, the other thing was I installed something to Edward Crosby. What was it? A muscle wire? Right, give him a muscle wire. Because that just gives a, a, a straight up work speed bonus and, and hit points bonus or whatever else. So that should uh, just be a nice little bonus for him as well. Seeing as he's arguably one of our more important colonists. Given that he's building the whole fucking cyber orc. Um, what was that I wanted to check here? Um, 
I don't remember. Plasteel. Plasteel. Right, right, right. Why are we looking? Why is that 21? Why did I limit that so low? Um, I want to make sure. We should probably set it to just 75. I'm a little bit concerned that we might end up grinding through our steel a little bit too fast. Bearing in mind, it's seven times the amount of steel needed, but... That's okay. It's quite expensive. That's actually really expensive now that I'm running the numbers. But we can just afford it. Now, the goal for today is to deal with the kind of glaring issue that we have in regards to armor. After all this time, we're still using flak vests and simple steel helmets. And that's just not good enough for this level of the game. Particularly when we're looking at maybe the Empire being one of the only enemies we've got left to fight. Especially if we keep capturing settlements at the rate we are. So, I, I kind of want to put down another, another fabrication bench and have Delta help out too. Uh, maybe we remove the tailoring table, or maybe we go for a smaller tailoring, tailoring table and put another... So after we've done with making the longsword with the smithy, we replace it with the small tailoring table, reinstall these cabinets, and then put another fabrication bench there. That will also have the bonus of it being able to connect up to these fabrication cabinets. I think that's probably not a bad idea. Um, okay, here's what we'll do then. Let's go ahead and craft the longsword to start off with, or not. Do we seriously not have the research? Uh... Gl Gladius? Is that long sword? L long, l long sword. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, you can craft, um, oh, wow, we actually can't. That's insane. You can craft uh, all sorts of intrusive brain implants, combat AI from, from malevolent AI persona, cause making a long sword though. My God, that's some complicated stuff. Finally, we've unlocked the deepest, darkest secrets of crafting one long sword. Where's Edward Crosby? Let's get him on that as soon as possible. They're all working on components and things like that right now. So we're going to do that. I have made sure that they are not smelting long swords automatically as well. Because it would suck to obviously have spent all this time and effort. Uranium. Really? Fuck off. Come on. <laughs> Let's just use, um, how about wood? I just said any long sword. So I assume it doesn't matter what the core material is for that. Right, let's give that one a go instead. Thank you, Edward Crosby. Much appreciated. We're still waiting on his 18 crafting skill, don't forget, as well. It's going to take him a little while longer before he gets there. But when we do, we can make basically the second batch. And then the only thing is one of them requires the 19 crafting that we saw. And that one's going to be so far away, we might never get to it. But after we've crafted, I don't know, say 11 sets of Cataphract armor, we might be in a different situation. It's also another reason why, obviously, I want another fabrication bench there. Right, so when that is finished, there we go. We'll go ahead and remove this. We'll replace it with a small tailor bench. We'll move the tailor cabinets up to the top here. Then we'll replace this with another fabrication bench. But the reason I want to get another tailor bench first is so that we can copy these bills over so I don't have to do it again. Right, now let's paste that one in there. And then you can go. Let's get my man Pork as soon as you're ready. Again, I'm trying to open this up so there's always two blocks of movement around them at all times. Uh, can't really do much about this area. This is really where there's only congestion now, but it doesn't really matter too much given that there's like, what, three entrances on the bottom here and then two on the top as well. They can move around. They'll be fine. Right, good shit. Okay, let's go ahead and get another one of these built. Then that's going to be another two advanced components but there's cost of doing business again with the, with this amount of stuff that we're that we're trying to throw together it's it's gonna take a long time just having a single fabrication bench to do it there we go okay uh i guess we could copy these bills over i guess it wouldn't hurt because they're all limited aren't they so we're only making one of those one of those and then it'll automatically yeah okay that's fine we could even go as far to remove this one as well the assembly bench, and then we can move this over there, and then we've opened this area up too. Ah, you know, I can see that. Um, I might put the, if we can, I'd rather put the refinery up here, though. Yeah, I mean, it's not really going to make much difference, because, again, the refinery is not one of the super essential things. So we'll put the heaters up here together, and then we'll move that a block north. We'll move this over and take up these two squares. We'll move the assembly bench, because that's unnecessary now that we've got two fabrication benches. There we are. We had to compromise a little bit here and there, but that's not too bad. We opened this area up, so there's always two blocks of movement. Besides, I guess, here, but there's not a huge amount I could do about that. Put it there. The issue is it was the matter weaver that wasn't connected up to that far bench anyway, so that's fine. That's more than okay. Oh, our beam cannon's ready to go. Excellent. More war crimes. Just what we're looking forward to. There we are. And then we'll go ahead and get Delta to... Oh, I should have built the other one this time around, shouldn't I? Anyway, let's go ahead and pick that one up. That'll be our, our backup plan again. And then I called in two caravans a couple of days ago as well. Just to see if we can get some more plastic, realistically. Because although that, that bill is kind of fulfilling some of our needs, we were able to build, I think, the other muscle wire. Yeah, cool. So we can finish off Sharamus's legs then. It's still not enough. It, we, we are burning through steel incredibly fast. We're down to 724 steel. So we've kind of used up half of our half of our steel usage today alone. So I'd rather kind of avoid that if possible. 
Um, done a little bit more moving around as well, just trying to tidy up this zone. So, it, again, it's just unnecessary, a lot of it, I will admit. But just trying to make it as easy as possible for our guys to move around. Okay, when these guys get here, we'll get Delta on that as soon as possible. How much silver we got? 6,004. Ooh, it's kind of bad timing on that one, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Oh, time to attack 0 0.2. We might be okay. What I'll do then is we'll, we'll take the profit from the silver. And then, oh, you know what we can do? We could reenact the... Uh, repeal, minimum taxation, just go for regular because we're at 96% happiness. Then we'll get our regular profits back. And if I... I wonder how long it takes for that to repeal. I don't think we'll get it before the next tax cycle, unfortunately. Oh, it's empty? Uh, will that update now? Or is that just for the previous tax cycle overall? Uh, to profit 3,000. Oh, look. Yeah, they are slightly different. Unfortunately, it's not going to make any difference this time around. Oh, 14,000? It might. It's just updated. It actually might give us 14,000 in the 0 0.2 days rather than what it said before. If that's the case, hopefully these, well, these caravans should still be here while the taxes are delivered. Bear in mind, it's 0 0.2 days and then another 0 0.5 days on top of that. Less than 24 hours. They won't leave before then, I hope. Um, but we'll go and try with them anyway, see if we've got anything that we can spend the 6,000 on. Then if there's something we desperately need, we've got another 14k, so hopefully they'll hang on that long. Let's go and trade with Mummy the Robot. Oh, mummy. All right, so uh, they've got armor skin gland. Pretty good. Um, Barnet gland, it makes them considered ugly, though, doesn't it? Who really cares? Uh, moving is slightly lower, but again, Sharamus already has so much extra moving. As I recall, you can only install one gland at a time, can't you? So this might be worth it. Drill arm, give me that, because obviously we can't craft them, and that would kind of help out Halitos a little bit. Um, right, okay. Resurrect to make is obviously ours. They've got tech profit. I don't think it's really necessary at this stage of the game. Um... Yeah, wow. This was the exhausted goods trader. They still had nothing good. Now, I did say yesterday, depending on how you guys voted, we will spawn in the Tech Prince. And everybody overwhelmingly said, yes, do the Tech Prince. So, what we'll do then is, is if there's nothing from these traders with that silver, we'll trade it directly for... Uh, we'll, we'll trade it for Tech Prince, and we'll also incorporate like a, like a minus 10% in terms of a little bit of extra fairness there, uh, so that we can get access to that. I'd like to get the Catafrite one done first, though. So drill arm, armor skin gland. Oh, gold we needed, so give us that. And I'll just double check. Have they got plasteel? Oh, that was a close one. I almost missed out on plasteel. Right, okay. So we've only got a thousand left over after all this is said and done. Not ideal, I will admit. And then, uh, who are we looking for? Where's the other one? We've already, we've traded with mummy. Where? Oh, there they are. Okay, got it. We're going to need afford 105 plasteel from those guys. We'll take that for the time being. Oh, no, we can't. We can afford 104 plasteel. We'll take that for the time being and we'll wait for... Fingers crossed the taxes to turn up before these guys leave. We've got 0 0.1 days before we can get the bill. And then when we get it, we're, we need to pause it and make sure that that's not going anywhere. We've still got that sword, right? Oh, all the mono swords have stuck around. That's not right. I wonder if that's to do with the fact that... Um, what if that's to do with the deep storage one? And I assume we can't equip those. Oh, we can? Ugh. That doesn't feel right. Uh, That doesn't feel right at all. I'm going to go ahead and remove those. I can only assume it's maybe an incompatibility with the deep storage mod. Because we're obviously not supposed to have, uh, like, what is that, 17 mono swords? I'll deal with that. Bear, bear with me. This feels absolutely sacrilegious. Ah, oh, there we go. Cool. Okay, let's go ahead and reinstall that. And that's almost our first lot of deep drilling done there. Let's get you quickly just to, excuse me, get you quickly just to move that. Hauling. Oh, I thought he was operating it. My bad. No, he is moving it just very, 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 very... Very, very slowly. Would you like a, uh, a drill arm now, Halitos? Um, doesn't really matter where we install it, right? Now, as I recall, because of the new update, the, the drill arm won't affect deep drilling very much. I, it seemed to imply, it was, it was written very vaguely, I will admit. Um, but it seems to imply that it will help out a little bit, just nowhere near as much as mining would. Wow, we're actually making a profit from everywhere now, are we? Fantastic. And how long is it going to take to get here? It's like half a day, right? Half a day. Some of it's going to get here even sooner. We should be able to buy the rest of those resources then, no problem. Nice. There we go. It's only 3,000. It's a good start, though. And these guys don't look as if they're going anywhere for the time being. I will double check these guys before they leave. Because I imagine we'll have plenty of spare silver now that we've apparently got 14,000 per tax circle. Now that we've dealt with all the happiness issues. Delta, how's it going with those with those mana swords? Four left. We are getting, I will admit, we are getting one Luciferium and three Uranium per smelt. But... We'll just consider that the cost of doing... We'll consider that the cost of Delta spending like 16 hours smelting them all down. Oh, they're leaving. Shit. Okay, better get on it quickly then. See what they've got. Um, so we want your plasteel. Shit, they haven't finished hauling all of the resources yet. Ideally, we want all of this stuff. 
The uranium I will admit isn't so high priority, so we can drop those right down if we feel like it. Um, let's just go for like 150. A nice spare amount of uranium wouldn't hurt. Um, for like 200. Uh, slightly, slightly, tiny, tiny, weeny, a little bit more. Uh, perfect. There we are. 201. Absolutely perfect. So we've got all of the plastic there. We've got the steel and we've got the, got the uranium as well. It's still not enough for everything we need. Far from it, but it is something. And we'll have a lot more silver too, so we can start training some of that silver out for our tech prints. Now that the weapons that spawned in and that we definitely shouldn't have have gone, we'll go ahead and remove blade link weapons from the smelt list, but I'm more than happy to leave everything on. I've disabled charge weaponry and the plasma rifle. That's basically going to be our end game loadout, I think. The plasma guns are incredibly effective against armored targets, be that cataphract armor or centipedes, both of which are going to be our main end game enemies. And then... The charge weapon, I'm thinking if we give everyone charge LMGs or charge miniguns to help lay down some suppressing fire too. Because the plasma guns are so inaccurate, it'd be good just to wing a couple of people, slow them down, something like that. With faster firing. I think everybody, maybe not the charge miniguns, but maybe give everyone a charge LMG. And then, or not everybody, but half the people charge LMGs and half the people plasma rifles. I think that could work. Okay, cool. So we actually have all the resources we need to make these items we just don't have the crafting level by the looks of it obviously besides the persona core which i thought we were going to get from the uh from that ship that we went to raid we don't have enough gold still damn okay that one requires 19 so the only thing we're missing is gold for the lionheart the lionheart is very good so i don't want to miss out on that one too much elastic achilles i thought we'd already made enough elastic achilles but i might be wrong there um what have we got there so we've got the muscle wire armor skin gland bionic leg Oh, hang on a minute. I think the Elastic Achilles, I'm getting confused with the muscle wires. Right, I made extra muscle wires, didn't I, for Edward Crosby for his manipulation. Why is Helitos down as well? Oh, for his drill arm. Got it, got it, got it. Um, right, fair enough. So that needs more sim thread, which we can craft, obviously, quite quickly there. I'll get Delta working on that right now. Just get it done. There we are. That'll do it. Okay, perfect. Um, you, you can you can stop now. It's all good. We don't need any more sim thread. I don't think we need any more sim thread. I might just go ahead and suspend that rather than waste the... Waste the resource on it. Although, to be fair, it's like 10 cloth 18. Still wouldn't lose too much sleep. Okay, good shit. So that's the... Everything that we kind of needed to do dealt with. We can make our Link Monosaur, which I'd love to do as soon as possible. He's still using a regular Monosaur right now, isn't he? Yeah. Um, Link Monosaur is 10 Uranium, 4 Advanced Components, 35 Plastic. Oh, we're a Link Monosaur, fool. Um, 4 Advanced Components, 5 Luciferium. We could make one of those right now. And I think we damn well should. Because that would be a hell of an upgrade for him. Let's do it. Make a link mono sword. Suppress the hiccups and then make Doomsday Rocket Launcher. Oh, damn Doomsday Rocket Launcher. Let's put that at the top and let's get Delta working on that right now. So Cataphract Armor Tech Prints are 3,000 apiece. I think it'd be fair for me to set, trade 7,000 because we need two of them to actually unlock the armor. I think 7,000 silver traded for those. A uh, thousand extra for the convenience cost. Um, wait. Yeah, a thousand extra for the convenience cost would... But actually, no, you know what? 2,000 for the convenience cost. Let's, let's be reasonable here. Let's go ahead and just destroy uh, 2,000 of the... Can't pick up uh, silver. <laughs> or, or not. Never mind. There we are. Okay. Um, right, so Delta. Let's go ahead and pick up uh, all of it. You know what? I could just destroy a little bit like that. Roughly 8,000 in exchange for those. Now, bear in mind, that's, that's obviously quite powerful. Just spawning in the tech prints, but that's certainly not gonna give us. I still don't think we've got enough plastic even now to craft any cataphract armor, so it's really only got us halfway there. There we go. All of it gone. Tragic. It's also in a wall now for reasons unbeknownst to me. Uh, Delta, let's just go ahead and use it right now then. Uh, cannot apply it because it is reserved by Hauling Bot. Thank you, Hauling Bot. Very cool. Th that's where I wanted it. That's, that's exactly where I wanted it. Thank you. All right, here we go. Let's see what we've got then. That should take us halfway, and then the other one should take us. There we are, tech print applied. Thank you very much. Oh, and you do get intellect for applying tech prints. My, my bad, I completely forgot about that. Okay, so the question is, can we... Oh, and then we need to research as well, don't I? Oh, well, I don't know what I'm talking about. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have paid for that damn convenience fee in hindsight. I think it's time we say goodbye to the kingdom of Botner as well. So I've sent two raids. Uh, at least I think I've sent two raids. There we are. So we've sent... Oh, sorry, I should say two captures because obviously raiding is somewhat different. We've sent both of the level 8 military squads to Bats Castle by the Brook and Lenuia Palace. That should wipe those guys out and we'll disband the settlements because they are quite far away. After that stage, we want to take out the Goblins and then the Covenant of Barn, led by Traitorous Opsa. And then I guess we'll take out Butto Citadel as well and try and limit the Empire down a little bit. Um, actually, no, no, no. We'll obviously deal with all the others first and then we'll leave the Empire till last there. 
Damn. That's uh, that, that's going to be quite cool when it's just us versus them. Because I assume the raids at that stage will be limited to just the Empire. Is that a... Hmm. An entirely Amethyst Meteor, you say? Oh, double whammy. There we are. Okay. So we got... Lanuia Palace. So those guys are completely gone now. Again, we are just going to disband these because they are miles away and probably not profitable at this point. Um, and adding a ridiculous amount to our unrest and happiness. So you guys can go. Thank you. Um, delete settlement and goodbye. And then the castle by the... Whenever it wakes up. Uh, can't even click on that one. There we are. Bats castle by the brook. Goodbye, my friend. And gone. Okay. Good shit. So with that, our enemies become... I guess the goblins next. We could send them after the these guys here. Spider's Palace by the Field and the goblins. Take out those two factions. Now, as far as I know, the nomadic factions are still a thing that we would have to contend with. So I don't know if they're still able to raid us. I assume they are. How do I see the factions? Um, yeah, I see a lot of these guys that... I mean, these are the ones we just wiped out, of course, are still on the map. Blooming Corporation is still on the map. Maybe I'll have to find a mod to remove them from the game when they are... When they're wiped out, I think they should just completely disappear. That way, our enemies are only going to get stronger. I think that because at this stage, a tribal raid is a little bit, uh, as we saw yesterday, it's just a little bit embarrassing, isn't it? Dropping an orbital strike on a bunch. It makes me feel bad for, for war crimes, which is not something we ever want on this channel. Never feel guilty for war crimes, but there's something about laser bombarding a group of natives from orbit that just just doesn't strike me the same way. When it's people putting up a direct fight, you know, when it's the Empire turning up with their cataphract armor, actually killing our people, bombarding them from orbit with a, with a hyper-powered laser just feels right. You know, it feels satisfying. It feels like a good revenge story. But against those poor boys, they were, they were children. Those were children. Oh, Sharamus, it's time for your daily <laughs> intrusive surgery. Um, why can't I install anything else, huh? Install, there we are, elastic Achilles. Good shit. We can't install, by the looks of it, the armor skin gland, and I don't know why. Um, armor skin gland. Okay. Uh, why can't we install that one? It's a torso modification, right? Because we got the stone skin gland, which is better. Yeah, I didn't think you can install more than one. The stone skin gland is even stronger than the armor skin gland, as far as I recall. Yeah, moving time zero eight five, so it, you move a lot slower, but you get a lot more defense, particularly against sharp. All right, well, we could always give the armor skin gland to someone else. We give that to Edward Crosby, for example, or Delsa. Whoever we decide to be the highest pro priority. Good God. What the hell are you doing? Get off there. Oh, he's trying to listen to the bloody long wave radio. He's pushed Edward Crosby off of his seat. Oh, wait, does that mean he's finished the monosword? Hang on, hang on, hang on. <gasps> Warbringer. Link monosword. It's called fucking Warbringer. That's so good. Good quality as well. So not really what we're after, but obviously better than nothing. Wow. And the making of this monosword is like a backup weapon to Dalsor or something like that. Incredible. Let's get this, uh, actually, you know, let's draft him up and go and grab it now and then we'll get him rested up in a second. Once bonded to a wielder, the weapons persona refuses to be wielded by anyone else. Trust me, my friend, that is not a problem. There it is. Sharamus has established a bond with the persona of Warbringer. I mean, Sharamus is Warbringer anyway. Look at that. Absolutely phenomenal. Okay. Um, what type of DPS are we looking at now then, Chief? Melee DPS, 19.45. Pretty good. I was kind of supposed to be a little bit higher. Um, what's Warbringer like wielding in the hands of someone else, though, I guess would be a better a better test. Delta, come on. Oh, we can't equip it, though, can we? Bollocks. What if we pick it up and then manually <laughs> enable it from the sidearms? Can we do that? Yeah, we can. E excellent. Okay. 19.2 um, there. And what's she like with it? 16.14. Uh, I'm actually a little bit disappointed in some ways. I actually thought it would be a lot higher than that. But again, it, it's, it's on a curve, so... You can't just... Oh, is it now bonded to Delta? Shit. Is it always bonded to the last person that picks it up? There we are. I think that's better. Uh, We're fine. <laughs> I think. Unfortunately, there is there is just diminishing returns to how much we could put in there. We can still leak out a few more points, which might make a little bit of difference. But very much a lot of the upgrades we've gone for right now are movement upgrades, manipulation upgrades, sight upgrades, hearing upgrades, everything that contributes to battle. His arms... You know, but plus the sword aren't, aren't just going to win by themselves there. Good shit. What else have we got in the... So we've got the Elastic Achilles. Let's get Rose to do that right now. I thought Edward Crosby also deserved another energetic line there as well, seeing as he's working at a slightly reduced capacity because he's lacking that. That plus his muscle wire too should help speed things up a little bit here. The final thing I want to get done for today is to get Sharon. So we're going in the monosaur. We're giving him a few more implants here. 
the final thing to do would be to give him the Cataphract armor. If we can get him in that by the end today, I'd consider this an absolute win. And we've, we've upgraded Edward Crosby quite significantly as well. So we've redone this workroom. That's been, that's been fairly important. Then it'll be plasma guns and maybe marine armor for everyone else. I don't know if I can quite justify making everyone in cataphract armor because it will take genuinely years. Six advanced components, 150 blast steel and 50 uranium. Yikes. Okay. Um, 50 blast steel. We've got the uranium, definitely. It's whether or not it's 200 blast steel a set. We can make one set of cataphract armor. This is going to be the limiting factor now. And that is plast steel. Steel itself, not too bad. Plast steel, different, different kettle of fish, I'm afraid. Edward Crosby, rather than sleeping, my friend, get to work. I want Sharamus upgraded before the end of today. Tirelessly through the night, he has almost finished the Cataphract Town. What are you working on, components? That's fine. I want to make sure we're not accidentally doubling up. That's the only problem with having two benches with linked jobs. They can both start working on it at the same time and obviously using up the components that we don't need because we're just going to end up cancelling one anyway. Sharamus, come to the crafting room. We have a final gift for you, my friend. I want to see how fast he can move in Cataphract's armor too. That's going to be the important thing here. Boom. There it is. You, you may leave it there. Thank you. Uh, you. You may have one drink. And then we want this helmet built. My friend, put that shit on. Oh, God. He's naked. Uh, well, that's, that's fine. That's okay. <laughs> Poor Delta got an eyeful. Wow. Um, you look absolutely ridiculous. Let's have a race. A completely unscientific and probably not far enough race to really, really double check things. Uh, but we're going to go like this and just see which one gets to the other side faster. Frightening. Frightening. Even even wearing Cataphract armor, he can outpace an unarmored regular person. What's your moving speed? I assume it's, I assume it's fine. Um, what are we looking for here? Health, bio, social. It's here somewhere. But bear with me. Hang on. I'll, I'll find it. 105% moving, actually. Wow. Okay. That's, that's horrifying. That's absolutely fucking terrifying. Oh, it's done. Shit, that was fast. Uh, oh, thank God it matches. I always hate that when you have, like, marine armor that's white, but then the the helmet is gray or something like that. That matches, and that is horrifying. Look at him. He's perfect in every way. He makes Pork look like a tiny boy. My God. <laughs> What's his armor looking like, then? Um, armor sharp, 70%. Obviously, it's not taken into account, uh, into account the armor. It's a way to see his defenses with the armor... In addition to his implants, 138% uh, sharp, though, is absolutely nuts. That coupled with everything else, as long as we keep that stored on his on his armor rack, too, he's going to be unstoppable. This is insane. That's never going to degrade, either. So we can give this marine helmet to someone else. Um, can we just go ahead and transfer it to... Who's got the worst gear here? Someone's just got a recon helmet. Um, although, I guess a recon helmet... Yeah, let's go ahead and trade out just the recon helmet for... Uh, so transfer to this one. If I transfer it, it's not going to... You're right, so it still counts as porks. Good shit. Okay. Um, then we'll equip from that one. And then give me the helmet back. I'm, I'm going to just reorganize it using Sharamus. Force wear that one. And then we'll transfer this back to the rack. There we are. And then transfer to arm rack. That should leave him naked with a spare helmet there. There we go. So, so other people get an upgrade as well. Oh, man, I need some damn clothes. Have we got any left? Oh. Okay. Where the hell are they tunneling through then? Oh, no. It's a little close for comfort, but on the plus side, we've got the kill box. Maybe now. Maybe now is the time to test out new cataphract wearing, monosword, linked monosword wielding, almost fully implanted Sharamus. And we've got the kill box on our side too. So here's what we'll do. We'll leave it there for today. Tomorrow, we'll deal with the insect. And then to be honest, we're not far off of having to go and raid. We just need to upgrade our regular guys, maybe some marine armor, some plasma guns. That'll just take time, really. Time and acquiring resources. Then after that, I'm going to burn the empire down. Thank you all for watching then. Stay tuned to find out just how many insects a merciless playthrough will have at this stage when we got this much colony well. Thank you to Scared Blueberry, Gogolus, Saravi, Anthony Gawley, Goatfather, Chris, Fabrita316, Alex, Distorted Triangle, Scorched, Pelvis Presley, Crow Skull, Limpy George, Amethyst Corona, Asana Kurito, Zazzy7011, Harry McGowan, Peyton Denisar, and everyone else at the Insane Tier Lovers on Patreon for making the channel possible in the first place. Sorry, in the background, I've got a load of insects burrowing through my headphones. Good God, that's loud. Thank you for your support. Thank you for making the channel possible in the first place. And a thank you as well goes out to Peanut Gorilla, Derek F., Harry Soff, Zega the Chaos King, Zulu, Attila, I Am Sagatair, Genji Zerka, Jackson P, Jacob Wolfie, Cogzell, Hated, Chronic Blob, Jeebus Crust, and Llewellyn Thomas as well for their support over on Patreon. Big shout out to you guys. Thank you all for making the channel possible 
in the first place. And I'll see you tomorrow for the testing of Sharamus 3.0.